So how would you describe this in words? Palindrome. What kind of palindrome? This is an even, even length palindrome. Cannot have anything. It's, it's uh, you know, it cannot have uh, something in the middle. So this is an even length palindrome. And what's the classification of this language as we have studied? Is this regular? No. This is one of the languages that we proved to be non-regular. And it's context free. How do we know? How did we show that this language is context free? We just know. When you show that the language is context free, it's not the pumping lemma that. Show it. We showed that it's context free by, con by constructing a grammar for it. Right? So you remember that grammar? or epsilon. So this is a grammar. So a grammar generates a language. A PDA recognizes a language. So grammars generate, context-free grammars generate context-free languages. PDAs recognize context-free languages. Now what did we learn for generating regular languages? So what are the techniques that we learned for generating regular languages? Yeah, regular expressions and regular grammars as well. So you can generate uh, a regular language using a regular expression or a regular grammar. Okay, so now we need a push down automaton for this. So the idea is uh, very simple, uh, or in, in fact, it's very similar to that. But here, here, we need to match. It's like, let's take a, uh, an example string like a b b a so we need to we need to use the stack we push this on the stack then when we pop what should we get so when we, like when we when we push these so we're going to have a b pushed on the stack. Uh, sorry, we'll first, okay, so we'll first push the A, then we'll push the B, then when we pop, it should be the same, it should match. What we pop should match what we are seeing at the input. So we will have lots of transitions where, you know, A, A goes into uh, epsilon, and B, B, goes into epsilon. So this is what we are seeing at the input. This is the top of the stack. So uh, the input and the top of the stack should match now, unlike the previous example. So in fact, it's going to look the same, but except that the transitions are going to be like this. So this is my uh, start state, which is an accept state, because epsilon belongs to this. And then I have my, the same initialization, nothing, nothing. I'm going to put a dollar sign so that I can recognize an empty stack. Now I have a Q1. Now what should I do? Push or pop? Push. Push anything. So if, if there is an A, then I push, regardless of what's on the uh, top of the stack, I push an A. If there is a B, I push a B. Remember this thing? Read X from the input and push Y. So when you have this epsilon, this is a push. When you have Y goes to epsilon, this is a pop. Now, how do I know now when to get to switch to the popping mode? It's a non-deterministic. So I can just put an epsilon, I'll, I can do that anytime I want. So it's a non-deterministic, it's like an, an N, uh, NFA. 
you make the transition whenever it's the right time for you to. So with a, an epsilon, and what should be the top of the stack? What should be the top of the stack at that point? Uh, Nothing. I don't care, right? So you can you can do the So here you are saying no matter what I have in the input, no matter what the top of the stack is, and I'm going to do nothing. It's like a push nothing. So this is just like a pure epsilon transition. And like I said, you know, in, uh, in non-deterministic finite automata, we take the epsilon transition when it's good for us to take the epsilon transition. It's like, you know, uh, you are trying to get that string to get accepted. So you choose to take the epsilon transition when it's a good time to take the epsilon transition so that this string gets accepted. Now here, what should happen? I should pop. Now, if I have a, if I'm reading an A, I should pop an A. And when I'm reading a B, I should pop a B. And this is the state, Q2. Now, I accept, what's the transition that will put me in an accept state? Nothing in yeah, so the, exactly. The, at the input, I should have nothing. At the top of the stack, I should have a dollar sign, and I, would, I will pop it. And this would recognize the language WWR using uh, this. Uh, so again, you know, clearly, if you have a valid, if you have a valid string like a b b a, you would push these two. You push the a, then you push the b. Then here, when you pop, the first time you pop what? You pop a b. You pop the same as what you have. So, like if, uh, and then you are done, and you go to an accept state. Now, if we put a string that doesn't belong to the language. Like what? Like, an, uh, you know, B, let's say BB. This doesn't belong to the language. So there is no way that you can get this accepted. Uh, of course, you'll put this, you'll push and you'll get this. Then when you pop, you pop a B. And you will get a dollar sign. Now, you have a B in the input, and you have an A at the top of the stack. So you need a pair, a matching pair with what? B A, right? But you don't have a B A. So B A is reject. B A go a trap to a trap state. You have an A A and you have a B B, which is a way of expressing the fact that what I pop should match what has been pushed in order for the string to belong to this language, right? So if I get a BA or an AB, a mismatch, then I reject. Do you see how this is going to accept the strings that belong to the language and reject the strings that do not belong to the language? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so in fact, both Q1 and Q2, thank you. Both Q1 and Q2, you have a loop. So you can stay in these states, looping. If it's yeah, thank you. <coughs> Any questions? OK, so let's write just to the, you know, the, the formal description of this. In this case, for this, our Q is equal to Q0, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Our sigma is equal to A and B. What's our gamma? Is it really? I thought about it. 
our gamma, what can we put on the stack? We can put an A or a B. Dollar sign. Or a dollar sign. So this is a symbol that belongs to the stack alphabet and does not belong to the input alphabet. Will there be cases where it's not a sigma union dollar sign? Sigma union, uh, in ge yeah, keep it general. Uh, I don't think we'll, we'll do examples of, uh, of that, but in general you can put anything. So you can put anything on the stack in general to keep it general. But uh, I don't think we will see examples of that. In fact, we will not see very many examples of PDAs. Uh, so it's, but in general, you can put anything. This alphabet can be totally different than this alphabet in general. And, you know, delta is defined by these transitions. And QS is equal to Q0. And F is equal to what? The set of states Q0 and Q3. Okay, so I hope that you now understand what a pushdown automaton is and how it can recognize languages that cannot be recognized using uh, finite automaton. Questions?